Let me turn this one off. Oh, maybe if I turned it on, it would work better. How's that? <laughs> all right. Step at a time. All right. Thank you, Radic. First of all, I want to thank the Bruneau team. They, they're always extremely hospitable, and they put on a great event. So I know we you haven't proved it yet. We'll see how good it goes. But I'm really grateful to Radic and the whole Bruneau team for pulling this together. So this is a new presentation for me. I wrote it just for this conference. It's different. Usually, when I do these keynotes, it's more of a technical roadmap. But this one's uh, not at all a technical roadmap. It's something different. And so I really appreciate feedback. Uh, if you see me in the hallways later or something, tell me you know you liked it, it sucked, anything you know, just any feedback is welcome. Okay, so what we're going to talk about this presentation. It's uh, I just wrote. It's called Rockstar Recipe. So what it's about? It's about um, proven approaches that I've seen by dealing with thousands of engineers, literally thousands in my career, and I've tried to. Do, it's basically a top 10 list. I got like 10 slides that show like what are some of the attributes, what are the behaviors, what do I think makes a really awesome engineer? And you know, most of this stuff isn't even particular to engineers. It's, it's generic. It applies to pretty much anyone. And why, you know, why should you care, right? What's what's good about this? It's that um, it's any. It's about it because it's about you. It's about your career. It's about People who are happy and enjoy doing what they're doing and are good at it are, you know, they enjoy life better. They're more pleasant when they go home, you know, to their families. Uh, think about how much time you spend at work with, you know, whether it's online or, or you know, directly in the office with other people. So, you know, you're important. It, it's worth doing it right. So I just want to to pass this along. And so. Uh, what, you know, who am I? What, what cred do I have with you guys, right? So I've been a kernel developer, a Java programmer, a cluster uh, programmer and architect. So before I became a manager, I used to do some real work. So, but not only that, but I've seen, you know, uh, I don't claim to be a rock star myself, but I've had the privilege of working with a lot of them. And there's some rock stars in this room. And so, you know, just like open source, it's like pass it on. Maybe you can learn from what others are doing and, you know, and build on that. So that's the whole point of this talk. So first slide, um, a lot of people think that it's their manager's job to uh, tell them what, they, what to do, what their career should be, and, and every step they should make. But you know, honestly, uh, your managers do want to help, but nobody should care more about you and your career than yourself, right? And so. A lot of people think that you, know, you take a job, and you, know, you might read a job description. That job was not written just for you, right? Because everyone's different. Everyone brings different strengths to the job. And so the first thing I want to say is that uh, one thing you can do when you take a job is, is to tailor the role. So by tailor, I mean tweak it, not just like say, hey, I took this job, and I'm not doing any of that, right? <laughs> it might be like, hey, there's some things that um, that I'm good at, that I can do. I can, I can write auto tests. I can be good at adding documentation. I can improve the usability. I can integrate it with better with other components. So it's all about creativity. Add your own ideas to what your job is. The other thing is when it comes to your job, that's how people perceive you. That's how they view you. And so they view you through two main ways. One is your output. You know, whether it's your code, your documentation, your testing, it's really what you do, and that's important. But also, uh, your perception is really a lot based on your interaction style. Are you somebody uh, that people like to work with? And that's what a lot of the other, uh, the rest of these slides really talk about is more interaction style and, and what I find really makes a successful engineer. So in, in your job, it's important to care about what you do. So if you don't like what you're doing, then don't do it, really. You're not doing anyone any favor. Like the, the worst thing is to have somebody miserable in their job. It's not good for the person doing it. It's not, nobody wants to be with them. So care about what you do. And you know, the fortunate thing in our industry, there's so much opportunity. There's so many different roles. This, you know, even at Red Hat, we have so many different products and stuff. If you don't like what you're doing, go on a different team. That's the cool thing. 
Um, we, all have, we all know what uh, garbage in, garbage out means in computing, right? It's like you, you know, throw in crap for inputs and you'll get crap for outputs, right? Well, it's the same with your job. If you don't take, if you don't care, if you don't really put quality into it, you're not going to get quality out. And it's not just about, uh, you know, the, the, the code. It's about your satisfaction and your enjoyment. And, you know, one thing I'll get back to later, it's, it's not to get, like, too philosophical about it, but, you know, when it comes to liking what you do, like, it's really about the journey. It's like, you know, you're never done. It's, you, you know, you can always learn and grow. So you might as well enjoy what you're doing along the way. Now, next point is breadth is an option to depth. A lot of people think that the best way to be a rock star is to do one thing, like, your whole career or, or for a long time and just stick with that. And that's fine because, there, you know, that's one approach. Because it, keep in mind, like, these things are not, um, they, not everything works for everyone. So it's like pick and choose what works for you. But what some people often don't recognize is that breadth or, or having expertise in a lot of different topics, that's really valuable too because there are, frankly, in our industry, it's harder to find people who, who uh, have, a lot of, um, have a lot of experience in different areas than people who are narrow. But to do something different, it takes some courage, right? You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to do something different. And so it's, um, you have to be willing to, to stretch and grow. And growth isn't just technical skills. So it's not like, hey, I'm doing kernel device drivers today, and I'll do. Uh, networking layer tomorrow. That's one form of technical growth. But true rock stars don't just grow technically. They grow in non-technical skills. So things like uh, uh, organizing a project or uh, being good with support. And we'll get into those things. So it's not just the technical skills that make up a rock star. And when people move, I say it's, not, it's often um, not um, a lateral move. And what a lateral move is, I mean, sometimes you could be like the authority or the expert in one, one topic or one subsystem. When you move over to a different team, you're probably not going to be the expert on that team, right? And so sometimes within your career, you have to like go down to go up because you can, you know, the more you learn, the more you can grow. And, and so it may look like you're taking a, you know, a step down or, but, you know, when you add all those up, it's really like, you're, you're getting to higher and higher places as you go. Nobody likes trolls. So, you know, a lot of people think that, hey, I'm a tough guy, right? I'm going to be that guy on the mail list who, who just snipes at everything, you know? And, and they think, like, you know, I'm awesome. And, you know, people are, my peers are really looking up to me because they think I'm standing up to everyone. You know what? You look like a jerk. You really do if you do that, right? So what's better, you know, rock stars don't do that. What rock stars do is they're more problem solvers. So rather than saying, oh, that'll never work, or that's, you know, stupid and stuff like that, they propose ideas. They say, you know, OK, hey, that's a good approach you had, but how about, you know, if we tweaked it this way and stuff like that. So being a problem solver, that's what rock stars are all about. The other thing is, Trolls don't listen, right? All they do is uh, they're output-only devices, you know? And so um, what you need to do is you rock stars, basically, it's almost like uh, a tenant of open source. It's like you, you, know, you, you take stuff that already exists, and you can build from it. And so that's what uh, you know, rock stars do is they're able to hear and listen to what others say, uh, sort of like start with their approach and, and augment and build build on it. And uh, to be a rock star, it's just as important how you say it than what you say. And it, often it's more important how you say it. Because a lot of people, when there's this a tendency, like on mail lists and stuff like that, for people to be uh, more abrasive or more terse and not really show respect for others. And so, you know, True rock stars really show respect for other people. And the last point I have is avoid slamming groups. Sometimes people say, like, oh, everyone on that team sucks. 
don't trust any of them, they're all bad. You know, that's not really helpful. Often, I hear it as a manager, I'm usually in that category, right? Don't trust them, right? <laughs> so, uh, but the truth is, anytime you're slamming a whole group, it probably means you're being a troll, you know, because seriously, yeah, not, not all groups are super awesome, but, you know, there's, there's good people in, in all teams. Next point is human touch. So as geeks, you know, it's really easy to do everything online, you know, IRC, email, whatever, Twitter, all this stuff, right? But what we find is, seriously, you can get so much more done sometimes by doing it the old-fashioned way, talking to people, you know, picking up the phone, um, you know, Going to uh, conferences like we are right now, DevConf is an awesome example because you know people often say it's the hallway track that's the best, you know, not the presentations, but just getting to talk to other people. So you know that stuff is more valuable because you don't, you may not realize it, you know, whether you go to the you know Starro Bruno Brewery thing and stuff like that, you know, that party. It's just you're, you're establishing bonds and connections with people that you don't even realize it at the time, but trust me, it, it really means a lot and makes you much more effective. So um, rock stars can be, tend to be more social, I guess is a word to put it. They're not completely introverts. Um, another point is you don't always have to get in the last word. This is, I see this often with people who are more junior in their career. Say you're on a mail list. It's like somebody you know, does a reply and you always have to have like the last reply, so you just keep going and, and going and going, and it never stops. You know, sometimes it's better just to uh, let things you know flame out, or to you know, if you don't have anything constructive to say, don't f don't feel like you have to get in there and uh, just keep twisting the screws on it. You know, it's like because a lot of it's really you know talk with people inside, trying to get them to um, you know. A, t a common understanding and just be willing to say that you don't have to win all the time because it's really about it's not if you can talk with somebody on the side or in other ways and help shape their ideas it's often more successful to indirectly get your uh, points across teams are better than individuals teams get much more done than individuals that's like often the term rock star you think of like one person like up on the stage, you know, like a solo performance. And so that's why I think rock stars is a little bit of a misnomer, whereas I think it's more like uh, a soccer team or a football team, is that what you guys call it? You know, that that's a better uh, analogy. And it's clear that um, the smartest person, uh, a team of collaborative people can do much more than one smart guy or, or, or one smart woman. So. It's really how do you, rock stars are good at working together with other people. Um, and so in that sense, it's not winner take all. It's not one person has to win and someone has to lose. It's really about how do we work together as a team. And another point is sharing, mentoring, and growing. So some people think in their careers that the, their best strategy is to be the only guy who knows something. It's like, hey, I'm the only one who knows this subsystem. They can't fire me. Um, you know, but I call that like a monopolist, someone who has to hold all the, the toys, right? But something, someone like that never becomes a rock star because they never get out of that toy box. They never play in a, on a team, on a bigger field. So if you want to be a rock star, you've got to share your toys. That's the point. Walking the walk. So you can't expect more from others than they're willing to do yourself. So um, you know, if, if you're um, nasty to people on the mail list, people aren't going to be good to you in return. If you, um, if you, you, know, if you don't um, try to uh, do things like, you know, if you're the first one to leave at the day, you know, if you're not working very much, then you know, you can't. If you're any form of team leader or something like that, it's like you have to be willing to help other people on your team out in other ways. Like, 
you know, whether it's, I don't know, uh, help to test or try stuff out, you know, review the documentation, see if you can follow the steps and get this, these things to work. Um, and, but you also, as part of walking, is that people are not the same. So people come into projects with different skills. So there are some people who are awesome at testing. There are some people who are better at um, documentation. There are people who are better about community building and stuff like that. So walking the walk means that, you know, treating people with respect, uh, be willing to, you know, work hard and set a good example, and to recognize that people bring different talents. And open source would not be successful without different talents, you know, we, whether it's people doing storage or people doing middleware and stuff like that. That's the reason it's succeeding. It's because uh, people walking together. Rock stars are always customer focused. So some people think that the customer is the enemy. Like you hear like, man, my job would be so much easier if these customers weren't submitting these stupid bug reports or stuff like that, you know? But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, developing software and delivering products, something's only useful if people use it. Like, I, I think, you know, Linux, open source, hugely successful, right? Used by millions of people, millions of, you know, varieties of applications. That's awesome. So if you just code stuff and nobody uses it, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. It's, that's, a, that's an academic exercise. So for customer focus, it's, you want to try to, um, first thing is, install and run your, your, your code. Like, I know people who are, sometimes they'll, they do like this one small component that's part of a bigger application, right? And they'll say, um, you know, but they don't even know how to install and run their product because all they can do is like their own little, you know, tiny piece. And so rock stars know, have an appreciation for how easy is it to install your stuff? How easy is it to use it? They have a sense of, they talk with like the support team to understand what are the inputs they're getting from the customers. Um, support teams add valuable experiences in terms of how this stuff is uh, received or, you know, what, what the customer experiences is. So it's extremely important. And as part of that, in order to prepare your code um, that it works in the first place, is that developing automated unit tests are a core part of developers' jobs. So in the old days, in the bad old days, people would think, hey, I'm a developer, I'm going to throw it over the wall, uh, the guys in QE are going to write the test, and it's all going to be awesome. But you know, that's, that um, separation just doesn't work. Now, fortunately, these days, we have much more collaboration between QE and the developers. But rock stars are, t are people and teams who develop automated unit tests that do like CI testing up front. So don't think that uh, automated unit tests are not part of your job, because they are. And that's what it takes to be a rock star. Managers don't have magic wands. So people come to me all the time and say, hey, I need you know, twice as much travel budget, and I need you know, to hire twice as many people. And it's like, yeah, awesome. Everybody does, right? And so you got to recognize that we don't have infinite budgets. So you know, we have finite constraints that we have to deal with. But, uh, but that doesn't mean don't ever talk to your managers. That's not the point, because managers like to talk to people and get that input of what's going well and what's not. But instead of coming to your manager with demands, come to your manager with ideas. It might be like, hey, I know we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, there's too much. We can't, I, I can't get all this done. Is it all right if we focus our priorities on this stuff here and you know, we do less of that stuff? So that's you know, an idea of like a trade-off proposal. That's the type of thing that, you, that work well to discuss with managers. Also, um, phased approaches. It might be like, look, you can't do everything all at once. So just talk about, OK, let's start with this. You know, this will be phase one. Then we'll do you know, phase two later. So it, it's really about um, you know, coming up with ideas and, and being creative, as opposed to just trying to dump your problems in somebody else's lap. And raise issues early. So, um, 
honestly, managers want to like to find out about problems in, in the like the release uh, early rather than often. Like people often say, oh, you know, at the end when we're doing the code freeze, someone will say, oh, well, we're you know we're way behind on it, and it's like, well, did you know that a month ago? Yeah, we knew that a month ago. So bring it up because that allows your managers to help maybe you know, shift some more people on to help that, you know, the trouble spots and things like that. Their rock stars are, um, it's amazing how much more productive some people can be than others. Seriously, there are, like I put up here that uh, productive people can be three times more productive than the average person. Uh, I think that's, I think it's, it could even be more than that. So, you know, true rock stars, it's just amazing what they can get accomplished. And there are rock stars in every discipline. So rock stars are not just coders. There's rock stars in uh, program managers who like coordinate things, people like scrum masters. There's, there's rock stars in support. So these principles can be applied to anybody in, in any of it. And one thing I've found is that leadership and coordination is one of the, the hardest to find talents in, uh, in our industry. So, some, so what I would encourage there is for career advancement, like you don't have to go to the dark side uh, and become a manager. That's not completely necessary. What, but there's a lot of opportunities for like technical leads. It might say, hey, let's um, someone, you'll start within the development team coordinating the efforts or, or working with like two or three other people to, to get something bigger done. Or you might, uh, um, another way is to join, to go to meetings for another team. Like say there's other layers that call your, your software. So become familiar with what those other teams do. And those are examples of, of leadership. So don't be afraid to, to try and get out that because I'm telling you, it's always a scarce skill, so it's always going to be uh, in demand for people who can, who can do that in a cooperative way. And so rock stars typically um, are people who combine most of the, the attributes within this, within this presentation. So the last, one I'll, uh, last of the 10 things before I get to summary is what I call the career unicorn. And that is, it's the difference between a job and a passion. So um, if you can find a job where it's not, you're not just punching the clock, you're not just doing it to pay the mortgage or, or your student loans or your car bills, but it's something you really want to do, that's really special. And I think that open source provides us all a really unique opportunity to try to land a unicorn job. So take, for example, um, you know, people work in Linux, uh, open source. It's used in so many different ways. There's whether it was, you know, things like the one laptop per child initiative that was trying to get computers to uh, uh, low income people in countries. You know, there's a lot of what we do, it's more than just, we're not just selling stuff, right? We're making, we're transforming the industry. We're making a lot of things happen beyond just. Our company, of course, you know, you want to contribute to your company. You want to align your efforts with your company. But open source is a truly unique way to do so much more than that. And that's why I think, you know, we're really in a, a unique profession because it's not just a job. So in summary, um, there's, there's no one right answer for everyone. It's not like do this, do this, do that, and then you'll be a rock star. Because there's different rock stars and different ways to get there. But what this shows is that rock stars typically like what they do, they care, they bring passion to their job, so they're not doing garbage in, they're, they're putting passion in. You put passion in and you get rock star out. That's really how it goes. Um, rock stars are team players. They're not trolls. They don't just snipe. They really propose good alternatives, good solutions. And they have the courage to grow, to step out of their comfort zone, to try something different, to help out other people. And rock stars, they can, through their uh, examples, they can truly be inspirational to others. And the thing is that 
most people think, oh, I'm not a rock star. I can't do that. So all this stuff doesn't apply to me. But the thing is, people can. It's like, you, it's easy to, to not think that you have what it takes to get there. But really, all it takes is tr you know, uh, playing well with others, uh, growing, respecting other people, and, and trying to challenge yourself in new dimensions. So to wrap up, it's really your journey. You know, I'm, in, I'm old. You know, Marco reviewed the slide. He says, Tim, you're old. So this is, really points it out that uh, what I learned is that, you know, I've been in this business over 30 years, and it's a long time. And, but it goes by really quickly when you enjoy it. And the way you enjoy it is by bringing passion to your work and being part of a strong team. And so open source is a great way to do that. And uh, so I hope you do it well. It's hard. It takes constant effort. You're never done. But it's well worth the ride. So do it well. Thank you.